All right, my friends, I am back with a special video this week. I'm at Morrow Bay, and I break 80 for the first time on video. Not only that, I shoot in the mid to low 70s, which is phenomenal for me. This video, I decided to make it 18 holes because I've never done it before, and it's the best round I've ever shot on video. So I know for the people who haven't seen my videos, I play here all the time. This is like my home course in San Luis Obispo. Fairly straightforward course. I'm playing from the tips and it's 6,300 yards. Nothing crazy, but the green's difficult. So first hole, par five, I hit a great shot to start. I also never warm up. It's part of my thing. Today I'm also playing with my good friend, Brett Krause. It was a pleasure playing with you and two other fellow gentlemen. I do not remember your guys' names. Sorry about that. And instead of, I'm about 250 yards out on this. And instead of going for a three wood, I usually go five irons because, look, I'm going to be straight. I, last time I played was like a week before this. So no warm ups. I'm getting the feel. It's a great starting hole because you can go left, right, backwards, and it's nothing too complicated. I have a great look to get close to this pin. This hole, I'm going to try to like tell you guys what each hole, since I play this course so much, what each hole means to me in terms of par birdie or bogey. This is a par birdie hole. And I have a great shot at birdie to start. The pin is back here, and for those who have played this course, you know this is a really difficult putt. It looks so simple and straightforward. And in my past videos, these are the putts I don't usually make. But to shoot what I usually sh what I shot today in this video, I you got to putt good, and I did. So I wanted her to start. Could not could not be a better start. This is a difficult hole. I think it's either like number two or three handicap. The wind blows into your face, so it plays probably like 480 yards. And this, like, even like watching these videos again, my swing looks really good. And from like an amateur point of view, like you just don't know on certain days. Like my swing never looks the same. And like watching these videos, like even this like warm up, it just looks so much better than it usually does for me. To be like 160 yards in on this hole in the middle of the fairway is like a blessing from the tips. Like I, I go a huge eight iron because I'm hot off the birdie. And for me, it's all momentum. I think it is for a lot of amateur golfers. I'm, you you get into like a groove, and I didn't I couldn't see where this landed, and I walked up and I was like in disbelief. Like two holes to start, two like really good birdie opportunities, and you can see the flag blowing. It's nothing crazy. It's like five to ten miles an hour, and this. I'll rate the putts in terms of difficulty. This was like a seven or eight. I mean, I had that going like a ball and it went like three and it trickled. And I just tap in for par. And I know like the sticklers out there are going to be all eggy and say I'm in front of the tee box. Look, I, there's, I'm in the, the tips. Like I can't put the camera behind. It just doesn't work. So I go three wood on this hole because it's kind of like a traditional thing for me. I don't know. I just don't hit driver. You don't need to. It's a short hole. And that was like probably one of my the best swings all day. It just felt so fluid. I didn't do anything crazy. It was a draw that rode the right side of the fairway. And uh, again, I all I'm in the zone. And when I'm in the zone, like I'm not thinking about my swing. And I think a lot of people can relate. And it's, when you're in the zone, it's like it's like the best feeling in the world. You just oh, nothing good. can stop you. <laughs> it's such a weird. It's like you're in essence. It's bliss. You don't even remember what's going on. I have another four-foot birdie putt, which is remarkable. But it's Morro Bay, and this is what keeps this course honest, is these greens are not easy. Good. I lipped out. I mean, I could have been two under through three. I don't think I've ever been two under through three at this place. And I tap in, and look, maybe I should have put that, but I was playing with three other people, folks. And it's annoying setting up the tripod, and that was the club length away, so it was a gimme. I usually hit a pitching wedge on this, 
but the swing felt so good. And when it feels good, I can swing hard. So I took my 50. It's playing like 125. That's not a 50 length for me. That's like a pitching wedge. But I swing the crap out of this ball. And I moved it left just because I swung so hard. But that's totally fine. I mean, this was a miss for me. I mean, it looks it's a beautiful day. It even gets more pretty on the back nine. And every hole, like, the putter just felt better and better and better. That's a 10 out of 10 lag putt for me. Downhill putt. Tapping for par. All right, folks. So something pretty remarkable happens on this hole. And I'm curious to think what you guys, your thoughts and opinions on it. But you, as you can see, the whole whole right side of the fairway is out of bounds. And from playing Remarkable Golf in the first four holes, I completely shanked this right. Like, shank it right. And you can't really make this shit up. There was a guy over there, like, watching me, and he picked up my golf ball and threw it into the fairway. Like, you, you can't make it up. And I'm a big believer, like, you play it where it lies. You know? So I'm playing too. And is it legal i don't i don't know i don't really give a fuck that's where the ball ended up folks so that's that's where i'm playing it from and I, when i saw this happen i was like you know i think a lot of people can relate it's like i was meant to shoot a good number on this day like so i i mean the mindset was so good i didn't blink i didn't bat an eye about that and i had 200 yards in on a perch shot and i put it here it was really I look back on this day and it's like I try to think like where my mind was and how it happened because like I mean the skill is there but for me it's all mindset and I decided to chip this because there was a bump in front and it wasn't one of my better chips it was fine and this is a putt this is no gimme and I just I mean I was in like a bliss this essence state and for those who play golf, and I know like my loyal followers, like think about the time when you shot your best number ever on a golf course. It's like you, you can relate. You're in like a weird state. This isn't my best ever, but on film, it was like, this is crazy. All right, hole six. This is a huge fairway. I try, I, my miss is a draw, so I try to like hit a cut. But I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough to hit a cut when I want. It's always, it's always when I don't want. And I hit this a huge draw, and it was like, it was, it was fine. Sometimes you can get lost in the crap over to the left, but this is exactly where you want to be. With my favorite club, my 50 degree. The 100 yard stakes about 20 yards ahead, but it's downhill. So I had a plane like, like 110. And this green's a little bit of like a target. You got you have to hit it or it'll bounce. And I thin this, but it was fine. It was this is how good I was playing on this day. It was a miss. A total miss and it went right. I mean, I was like, wow, I'm really on today. Still one under. And this is just a lag putt for me. I had it kind of aimed right. I don't know why. I mean, the you can see the whole ocean in the background, folks. It's everything's going right. It was dead straight. And that's gimme territory for me. I know it doesn't look like it, but it was the club length for the sticklers out there. Hole seven. Again, a lot of people hit driver. I don't. The swing was feeling so good, and I can hit my three wood like 240, 250. And there's not a lot of room straight because the dog legs left. So I just try to hit a draw, keep it low, let it run. And I hit it really well. I just it didn't draw enough. But if I hit a driver, this would be in the woods to the right, as you can see. But that's why I hit three wood because it leaves me 85 uphill. I take it's probably playing like close to 100, so I go full sand wedge, 56 degree for me. And I swung hard because I I didn't club up. I yanked it left. That was my miss today, which was nuts. 
I'd be so stoked on any other day to be putting for birdie. And this is the tough pin location. It Look at how much this breaks. I had it breaking like six inches. I don't. I mean, I play this course once a week. I don't know how I didn't know. It just went... It broke like a quarter mile. But that's Gimme Territory, folks. That's going to be the name of this video, Gimme Territory. And comment below. I mean, what are your thoughts? For me, it's like if I'm playing with other people, especially people I don't know, like it's hard filming. Like I, I have to move the camera, mark my ball. So yeah, hole eight. This is a difficult part three. Not so much. It's nothing crazy. Just length. I had a five iron here because that's what I have. I'd probably had a four if I had a four iron. I don't keep a four iron in my bag because I don't. I can't afford one right now. And I chunk it. It doesn't look like it or sound like I chunked it. I did. And it hits this tree and puts me in the middle of the fairway. I remember, like, Brett looking at me. He's like, dude, it's your day. And I was like, I know. Some days, it's just the magic forces are watching. No easy chip. You can see the pins, like, four feet from the fringe, short-sided. This green racetrack's right. And if you don't drive NASCAR, you're absolutely fucked. And I don't. But I had this perfect... I mean, it was it was so good. Leaving me like five or six feet. It looks so much closer on film. It, it, it's not. I mean, actually, that's pretty close. <laughs> For me, it's so far away. It's such a... I'm not very good at putting. I mean, to scrap away with a, a par there, it's like, all right, we're still one under. I have not dropped a stroke. Another difficult hole with the wind. It's probably playing like 470 yards. Going out of my socks, out of my shoes big because I, I was in the moment. I was feeling good. And I missed. And this is going to be the start of a lot of misses. A golf is game misses. I whipped this thing into the other fairway. I was in the fairway, but not the right one. I'm so far away. You can't. I mean, I had it playing 200 yards, but I, I it was, I was so far away and it was not even near where I was supposed to be. That I, I truly didn't know. So I take my five iron and hit a prayer. And there was a couple swings on this day. I, I really try to study, and this is one of them. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal swing. So smooth and easy, and it even hit a little divot i mean it could not it was so good look where i ended up i it's remarkable i think a lot of days with the the usual mentality i have i'd be freaking out in that situation I and mean, i was like all right no big deal just five iron it was bliss total bliss not an easy putt either and you see the whole ocean on the right it's absolutely gorgeous the ball went left at the end. There was a couple putts there. I was like, whoa, it doesn't make sense. And another, this is like the fourth one where it kind of decides if I, am I going to be three or four over or am I going to be one under? And the putting was on. I had it like a little bit to the right, water to the left. Just perfect. I could putt the ball straight. That's such a good feeling. One under through nine. Wow. Unbelievable. Now, hole 10, I have the yips at this hole as of the last two months. I cannot hit a tee shot. I don't know what it is. I think the tee box slopes like to the downwards. I mean, on like a downhill lie from the tips. And I have a six iron. I kind of don't hit it full regardless though I mean this is one of the worst swings I have of the day I mean I chunked it whipped it and probably went 100 yards it was really bad I'm laughing I'm like trying to complain that's the tee box's fault no that was just a terrible terrible freaking shot so we're playing it like a par 4 86 yards on a par 3 I could probably throw the ball farther than that last shot I go full to 60, and I think in most of my other videos, I you guys see me screw up big. I just didn't care. I was just like, all right, no big deal. I'll hit a, I'll hit this on the green. I didn't hit the green, but 
I'm putting, and I hadn't dropped a stroke yet, so I'm like, all right, I'll get this pull, get this close, walk out with a bogey. Hit a good putt. That's a tap in. And maybe I should have putted, but like, look at we there's people behind us. No one likes um, people filming. I don't know why, but it's fine. I'm even on hole eleven. Like, just so. I'm still in the bliss state, but I played the last hole pretty crappy, and I topped this ball. It hits the car path. The trace wasn't even right. I this ball went a hundred yards. Which was like, it was kind of like a sh slap to my face because like you're you're even through ten holes and then you hit you can't hit a tee shot a hundred fifty yards. It's pretty embarrassing, <laughs> but I you know I play I'm playing golf and I'm two hundred yards on a, not the on one of the easier holes, so I go five iron, and I hit another crappy shot. This hole you can't go right on your second shot. It's like don't go right, don't go right. And I followed the exact opposite advice. So I'm sitting here for three. And for those who have played this course, you know this is a horrible, horrible spot to be in. This green is a racetrack left going towards the water. You have to hit this like maybe 10 yards on the fringe. And I would be freaking out usually. And today it was just like, all right, no big deal. Bounce, bounce. Could not be any better from there. Six or seven feet for par. I am... I think I have this breaking like two or three balls. The pin is... The, the pin's usually not red. It's a dump. And, nice. I mean, you see my reaction. Like, that's... That was like a... Wow. And I swear, if I bogey that hole, I'm in a bad mood. Not so much from the score, just from, like, me playing that bad. But that par save was, like, such a momentum builder. I remember thinking, like, at this point, I'm not even thinking about the score. I'm just trying to play, trying not to screw up my round. Well, I guess that is thinking about the score. And that was such a beautiful, easy swing. I was like, here we go. Like, let's bear down. Like, it's time that also ate a bunch of peanuts before that tee shot. And for those who have seen my videos, I melt down big if I'm hungry. I remember getting in the car, I was like, I'm bringing freaking peanuts. I'm not screwing this up today. And it, look at that whole, whole 10, I hit two shitty shots. I'm like, all right, time to reload on some peanuts. And I do. And like, look at this hole. Perfect drive, perfect approach shot. Another opportunity for Brady. And on this hole, you can't be putting downhill. You have to be putting uphill. And I'm putting uphill. Perfect, perfect putting location. I was like, this is a real makeable one. I want you to, like, it goes right. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, the water's behind me. It's going left. You can see Brett in the white T-shirt. He's above me. The ball went right. It was like a go. It was a phantom putt. It's fine. We'll take the, we'll take the par. All right, this is probably the last critical tee shot you have to make if you don't want to like completely blow up your round. It's pretty narrow from the tips. You can see on both sides. And I go nuclear because I'm in the zone. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm picking up the tee before the ball even hits the apex. Like I'm like being such a D-back. I'm like, let's fucking go. Ha. 150 yards in on this hole. That was a nuclear. That was one of the biggest drives I've ever hit on this. Fairly straightforward approach. Not a lot of green. You can miss. I go 8-iron soft. Actually, I go 9-iron big. 9-iron big because you'd rather be short and chipping and putting than downhill. And this is the swing I look at where I'm like, what happened? Because I, it went so far right. I, I squared it. I, I filleted it, but it went full right. Not only did it go right, I'm like behind this tree. And I wish you could see it. I got another angle. But, like, I can't even take a full swing because my, my club is hitting the tree. So, 
instead of freaking out, I was like, all right, well, I don't really have a choice here. I, like, I'm not going to cheat and move my ball. And I hit a, I hit a great shot. You can kind of see it bounce. I like, I mean, that was unbelievable. But this, wow. look at, I want you to look at this ball. Look at that. That's Mono Bay. Crazy. Look at where I'm aiming. It's like a six foot putt. This is total lag, like trying not to. Oh my gosh. I broke the length of my putter. That's a bogey hole for me. So this is a par hole. I'm plus one. I'm like, all right. Let's go. And I, I'm walking. There is a little fatigue and I'm not going to be like, well, I play like six rounds of golf a week. I, I don't anymore. I don't have time. So when I do walk 18, I get tired. But I feel peanuts. And I have energy. And I go nuclear with this drive. I just hit a little right. I think I was aimed that way. And it hits off this tree. And it puts me in the fairway. So I'm like, all right, let's go. I just got lucky. Let's get lucky again. A lot you I mean, I never, ever go three wood off the deck. It's not something I practice. It's not something I like doing. But I was like, let's, like, screw it. I just bogey last hole. Let's go. Like, huge energy. Oh. I chunk it. I chunk it like 100 yards. It was a really bad shot. But it's Morro Bay. It's a straight golf course. <laughs> That's why you do things like that. So I have, like, 130 yards uphill. I go pitching wedge because it's uphill. Probably playing like 140. And I hit a, another crappy shot. It doesn't look crappy, but it was bladed and it faded right. I hadn't hit a fade all day. So here I am, short side pin, shot four. I'm in like, looks like where dogs go to the bathroom. It's like the, that portion of the yard. You know what I mean? Like it's all a different color. <laughs> My ball's buried. Boom! Horrible bouncing. It was like six feet to the left. But we bear down. Another eggy five-footer. Oh, my gosh. And this looks so straightforward on film. It really does. But it's Morro Bay, folks. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Huge. That was huge. Huge, huge, huge. This whole is tends to be really hard for me from the tips because you have to hit a 200 yard iron straight and then you got to hit like a 140 yard um, approach so it's double double pretty pretty perfect iron shots so i go five iron and you can even you can even hear me like celebrate mid swing i was like because if you go right it's a par five if you go left you're out of bounds so i was it's like it's on and when you're one under for me through 14 holes, it's like at this point, I'm like, I'm just trying not to completely destroy the round. Like I don't ever, I'm like, in, I'm like, not only am I in the seventies, I'm in the low seventies. I hit this 50 degree, 130 yards. You can see the frustration because I hit it too good. I mean, that's, I was like, whoa, I nuked this thing. So I'm in the sawgrass. That's what I call it. The pin is over my left shoulder. You can see it. And before you see what happens, I'm like, I'm landing this on the fringe, and it's going to roll 30 feet downhill. Land it on the fringe, and it hit the tarmac, or the, the, the concrete. That's what I call the, the, the non crap And it, oh. I get pissed there because I did, I mean, that's more obey. I do everything right in terms of chipping, and it just punishes you. Oh, almost sank that. Whatever, it's happened for bogey. I haven't even had an opportunity to double on the day. So two over through 16, par five. This is a par hole. It's a straightforward par five. There's no trees involved. You just have to hit it straight off the tee box. And anytime I shoot or break 80 here, I par this hole. But, I mean, I'm two under. I'm not, I'm not going for 80 anymore. I'm, like, trying to shoot my record. My record here is one over. It's a 72. And I go right. So bad. So bad. I hit this tree. I'm in, 
I'm in the wood chips. Uh, hole 17, the next hole, is in front of me. Fairway to my left. And, like, I don't know if this is legal or not. But instead of going left, I just, you know, I was going to hit it straight. I'll ride the other fairway. I'm not in the mood. And I pushed it right. Oh, such a bad shot. It's really bad. So now I am... You can see the bunkers. It's about 175 yards away. I'm in so... I'm in, like, so far away. And I go huge with a 7-iron. This is a make-or-break golf shot. Like, this is a round ruiner. And, uh... I could not have flushed this any better. Oh my gosh, folks. It landed like six feet from the pin. It had no spin. I was out of the rough and it flew off. But it could, it was like, it was, uh, anytime I play the hole, I think about this shot. So I got a chip. Not an easy chip. I opened up my 60, do a flop. You get cute with it because this round is one I'll remember for a long time. It's hard to play good on film. For those who know, it's, it's fucking difficult. And another five-footer was like the sixth or seventh one on the day. It's pretty crazy because on the, at this golf course especially, like these are tough pots. On any other golf course, they're still tough for me because I can't hit the ball straight with my putter. And this thing just went in i was like oh my gosh it's just like my day it's 240 yards on this par three i don't have a club so i'm not kidding anytime i play this hole with a friend i borrow whatever their lowest club is so i'm hitting brett's three iron thank you brett to ap ap2 i think the, yeah titleist really nice club and i go huge because it's 240 yards i had a great shot Another, like, make or break. I mean, this is, like, I play this, like, a par four usually. 240 yards is, that's brute strength. And this is a phenomenal opportunity to up and down. I've been doing it all day. I was like, whoa, like, if I could walk out of here with a par and and walk into 18, two over, and then have an opportunity to birdie 18, that'd be, like, crazy. But, no, I double chip this. And... Wow. I guess that's legal nowadays. Whatever. I'm not taking a stroke off. I it just it was already a big fuck up. Like I don't need more, you know. So I'm putting for par. I'm I'm ticked off. I squandered a pretty good opportunity. This almost went in. It's a great putt. That would have been crazy if that went in. The putter was a part of me. It was like a. All right, 18th, three over. This is a par bogey hole. It's a bogey hole usually. It's a tough. It plays probably like it's all uphill. Doesn't really look that much, but it it's a it's a requires a huge ter uh, gosh, I cannot speak. Requires a huge tee shot and a pretty good approach. Oh, yeah. I just go ginormous and it could not have been any better and I'm like, "Let's go. Like it's game time." I think it's probably like tournament golf feels like. I'm not, I didn't play in high school, folks, so I don't know. This is pitching wedge length for me, but I'm like so in the zone. I was like, let's go. I got my 50 degree. Like, it's 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 on. Like, I'm going f huge. Oh, another just great. Oh, the tracer's all jacked up, folks. Sorry. It went straight. It, it went dead straight. Dead straight, 120 yards. Landed in the middle. The, it, oh, so good. The pin was back. That's fine. I never hit this green. Ever. The opportunity to birdie this to bring me to a 73. Morrow Bay is a 71. And I hit this pot and a little farther than a lag distance. You can kind of see it. Brett's like, you got to putt it. I was like, yeah, you're right. So I turn around and get my camera. It doesn't look that crazy. It is, folks. <laughs> it is, uh, my heart's beating. <laughs> no doubter. Ah, 74. 
that's it folks thank you for watching for those who bared with me for the whole time <laughs>